Welcome, Grant Campbell, to rawandcookedvegan.com. So it's nice to have you. Um, Pleasure to be here. All right, all right. And the way I'm starting these videos usually is I'm just asking you a little bit about your background, the family you were raised in, how they approach diet and health, uh, and if that influenced you in any way early on. Sure. Yeah, I was raised. <clears throat> excuse me. I was raised on a standard diet, uh, just meat and you know, home cooked vegetables every every evening. Not much processed junk kind of food. And uh, early on, uh, I had had asthma. My sisters had asthma. My brother had asthma, and other things like eczema. And my mother changed us from full strength cow's milk to to lighter strength milks, and that we noticed improvements in our asthma and that. That was kind of the first time where I'd actually substituted one food for another food, uh, and and that was a lesson that that served me well later on when I was to look at other diets. Uh, I also noticed that the full strength milk uh, you know, tasted normal, tasted like what I expected milk to be, and then when I changed to a lighter milk, it tasted like water for about a week. But then a week, it tasted like normal milk again, and then we made that down to an either, even lighter milk. It was once again tasted watery for about a week, and then it tasted normal. <laughs> and so, and now to me, milk is anything that, like a, a just a liquid that you can pour over something that, that usually something similar, you know, some sort of light color. It can be <laughs> banana milk. It can be cantaloupe milk. Anything. Right, right, and that, that's interesting. So you you use uh, full strength milk. You would be full fat milk, yeah, high fat. Yeah, that's yeah. what I, yeah that's what I was referring to. Okay, yeah. All right, so so that was your first introduction into the benefits of getting rid of bad bad food out of the diet. So and and about at what age did you make that switch? That would have been around age 15, 14. Okay. All right. And then did you from then on were you pretty much did, did you eliminate all dairy or just milk? I will, I'll still I'll still consuming uh, dairy, just the, the the super low fat, you know, one or two percent, as they say, low fat. That really is still about 30, 35 percent of total calories is fat, but <laughs> they call it low fat milk. Um, yeah, and so I found some improvements, but I, we still all, all had asthma, and we still all had a lot of health problems. And it wasn't until I was twenty five that I actually went vegetarian, and that was through a conversation with a friend. It literally lasted about two minutes. Uh, it was about how animals coming from factory farming aren't uh, looked after too well and end up with cancer, and then that cancerous meat ending up on the shelves in in, in supermarkets because you know they can have like a big on a cow's eye, and they'll 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 just um, you know take its head off and and sell the rest of it as grade one beef, and of course cancer flows through the whole body, so it's. <laughs> <laughs> pretty pretty simple, so, yeah. <laughs> right, and the other and the other thing he mentioned was the uh, the idea of animals when they're slaughtered. You know, they know what's about to happen. They're they're under stress, and and there's all these hormones and adrenaline this through their body, and and the idea of eating that and how that affects your you know your thoughts and your behaviors and and just kind of because that's what you kind of you build yourself. He wasn't trying to change me, but just had this brief conversation about something he'd read that he found interesting that he wanted to share with me, and it just it turned on a switch for me, and that that's really where I felt a change happen. I, it was the first time I ever became conscious of what I was eating. Really, uh, right. I, and the previous decision was made by mother, but this this time it was me, and I was I started reading every food left, started forming rules for myself, like I didn't eat anything with numbers numbers in it. I uh, like all the preservatives, and I didn't eat any frozen foods. I didn't eat any canned foods, and and those simple rules kind of eliminated, eliminated all the processed junk out of the diet. And over the next eighteen months, from when I from when I was twenty five, I just kept eliminating more and more foods from my diet out of choice and preference, okay. as um, uh, all animals animal products. All right. Until uh, until I was vegan. So and okay. I was on a cooked vegan diet for six and a half years, and I've been on a on a, a raw eighty ten ten low fat raw vegan diet for eight years now. Okay, um, I'll just make a note here, Grant, that 
there's a little bit of an audio, uh, occasional and audio interruption. I'd like to continue if you're willing to. It'll probably mean that the, the end result will have some anomalies, but hopefully it won't be so, so difficult for, for folks to hear what you're saying. Um, but, but I wonder if you might tell me, since you, you kind of had this long period of getting bad foods out of your diet, you gradually transitioned, I guess, first, well, the big switch was to vegetarian at age 25, and then you spent several years, I guess, moving towards vegan, and then you said you were vegan for about six years, and then, and then raw. And I'm wondering if you could generally characterize benefits you saw in your health as you made that progression. Yeah, good, great question. So I did notice I did notice improvements from when I went vegetarian. Uh, my, you know, when I when I gave up dairy, basically my snoring kind of disappeared, and huh. at that time in my life, and um, just I just I don't know I, I did feel just had that like I wouldn't get I wouldn't be stopping at, at the track when I'd run with with asthma wheezing and. Right. So that all those sort of problems improved. They didn't completely go away, but but they improved dramatically. And when I went on a, on a cooked vegan diet, I didn't eat a lot of fresh foods. So mostly it was all kind of cooked vegan. Uh, I used to make a loaf of bread every day and all this, okay. you know, um, like Indian style, really cooked foods. Uh huh. So there was definitely a, the fresh element was missing from the diet, and I noticed during that period. Uh, in hindsight, being on a, on a cooked vegan diet, that I was doing more, I was being more active. I found that that's when I started running more, and that's when I started swimming more, and that's when I became a volunteer, what we call a lifesaver in Australia, which is like a volunteer lifeguard on the, on the beaches. Yeah, I saw that you do that. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I, I love it. I've been doing it for over 10 years now. So it seems like the implication in what you're saying is you you um, you, you kind of – started having more energy and so it led you to do these other things that you would not have done without that energy. That, that's right. Um, but, but again, like I said, I noticed it in hindsight. It wasn't like I felt more alive, but I just noticed I was doing all this, all this more things and, and being more active. So therefore, you know, I must be doing the right things. And then when I went, when I changed to uh, the a raw vegan diet, which, which was just, fr you know, fresh fruits and vegetables, I changed just to 100% fresh fruits and vegetables with low fat. And just overnight, I, I just felt like I was awake for the first time in my life. I found, I found wow. that, uh, you know, in the afternoons at work, I wasn't falling asleep on the keyboard anymore. And I found that I was kind of, my running changed surprisingly in, in two different directions. One, that I could, I could run faster without, like faster for further. Uh -huh. So yeah. I could sprint for a longer distance without, you know, having to break down through lactic acid or lack of oxygen delivery or whatever the limitation was. Right. And I, but I also felt like I was getting endurance for free. Suddenly I could just go out and run for hours and, and feel fine. And, and it wasn't like that previously. That's interesting. I've heard that from other folks too. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah right. Increased endurance and quicker recovery, stuff like that. Oh, so the, the recovery is just absurd. The recovery <laughs> factor. Uh, you know, like I, I, when I was on a cooked vegan diet and I was running – a hundred kilometer or sixty mile race. Uh, I would take a week of walking around like an old man. You know, I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't even think about jogging for a week. Uh, wow. All I could do was barely walk. So <laughs> the the most active thing I could do would be cycle or swim at that point. Uh -huh. And but now, I, you know, in May this year, I ran a hundred miles in twenty four hours and came second in a race in in Thailand in the the heat and humidity. And the next day I was doing, I did 30 squats with some friends and, and then the day, after, the day after that I was, I did um, some training with a guy that trained with Shaolin monks for a couple of years and he was showing me all these crazy kind of kung fu style techniques. Cool, and, and but, but then we were sprinting around the track, uh, the Olympic track there and like literally I was doing, a, you know, I was doing like 95% effort of sprinting just two days after a 100 mile race. Wow. So it, it's, it's like night and day like. From not from barely being able to walk on a cooked vegan diet to to just almost no recovery time required on a on a um, eighty ten ten style raw vegan diet. Right, it's amazing. Um, when you when you initially it sounds like when you initially went vegetarian it was kind of for 
Well, I guess for health reasons in general, but I, I don't know. It's, it sounded like there were some ethical reasons in there as well. And were you, were you expecting to see great improvements or, in health, or did that kind of surprise you? Yeah. So do you want me to start that whole section again? Or? Yeah, yeah, if you could. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it was really interesting because uh, when I went, initially went vegetarian, it was for, it was, I was dri being driven by ethical reasons. But I did acknowledge that there were going to be health benefits and I did expect there to be some health benefits, but that wasn't what was driving me to change. Right. And then as I became more aware of the ethics and, and, and more aware of veganism and, and the benefits, and I just started making the changes for all reasons. And, and I found that was really empowering. Uh, it, it kind of it made, made it much easier for me to, to make the decision to eat this way yeah. um, because I was being driven by ethics and, and uh, health and performance benefits. So when one reason wasn't strong enough, the other one was still there to back me up. You know, this so is a great me. point. This is a great point, Grant. And it's like once you start to see all of the good reasons behind this, it becomes uh, it becomes almost impossible to defend any other diet. But but anyway, uh, go ahead, continue. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and then when I when I went started eating eighty ten ten raw vegan, you know, low fat raw vegan, <laughs> the change was changes were so profound. I just I really just felt. I felt like I'd never felt before. Um, I just I felt incredible, and you know a, a quote comes to mind by Dr. Douglas Graham that you know, nothing tastes as good as feeling good feels. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Yeah. And I, I started valuing how I felt after eating, almost above the the gratification from the eating process itself. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. All right. So. What I'd like to ask you is, um, you, you've been doing this a while, and one of the things I run into is, um, you, you know, people are having a lot of problems with grains. So a lot of people will go vegan, and then they start, and then grains form a large component of the diet. And it seems like your experience bore this out, that you, a cooked vegan diet was healthy for you, but, but when you went the raw, it, it just kind of blew it away. So I, I wonder if you might, on a scale rate various kinds of diets like I tend to put the sad diet at the bottom and then maybe you could say paleo is a notch up from that but then I would say cooked vegan uh, or vegetarians better than that and then cooked vegan and then raw uh, do you think that's the right way to look at it or is that misleading I think it's very misleading <laughs> uh, okay okay <laughs> <laughs> because uh, you know like the amount of fat that you have in your diet affects your physiology dramatically um, too much fat in the diet is going to cause blood sugar metabolic disorders like diabetes and candida problems. Right. Uh, but I mean, basically, I just look at it like, you know, nature got it right. Every creature on the planet has a species-specific diet. They all they all have food available to them, easily available to them, without requiring a stove or any tools. Right. You know, I, and I can walk up to a fruit tree and and pick ripe fruit if I can't even can't climb the tree the fruits eventually going to fall and I'm going to be able to access it uh, I can pick vegetables out of the garden and right. just eat them you know a lot of them can just be eaten in their natural state and so I think they're the they're the, the main foods that we require um, to you know to thrive on to, to meet our needs gotcha. so I find I sort of look at diets as okay fruits and vegetables are the, are the true health foods in their raw state um, you know, not having too much fat, right. and and then everything else is less than that. And you know, to the, I really feel like eating raw fruit, a diet of 100% raw fruits and vegetables, is the only way to nourish yourself effectively. Okay. And everything else is more is a lesser state. Like it's Sub, not substandard. Yeah, it's it's just not meeting our needs for all the you know vitamins, minerals, enzymes, coenzymes, antioxidants. Fat, carbs, protein, fiber, water, all those things. When you eat fruits and vegetables, you get all of those nutrients in synergy, and they all work in a synergy with each other. You, you can't take you know, a vitamin supplement to make right. up for a lack of. You know, it, it's not. It's just not the same thing as getting all those nutrients together and, and working in the, the synergy that we don't really understand. Gotcha. Gotcha. There's hundreds of thousands of phytonutrients in plants that we don't even know what they do. We're just right. identifying more and more all the time. So, right, right. 
And since you bring that up, um, could you tell me what your conclusions are regarding, say, B12, vitamin D3? Uh, do, you, do you think there's any need to supplement the raw diet in any way? I don't believe so. Uh, I think I'm of the opinion that if you're experiencing symptoms, uh, you know, get tested. If you're low, you know, take a B12 shot and, you know, there's no, it's not about being a martyr, you know, right. no point dying for the, <laughs> it's, you know, you're not much good to anyone if you're dead. So, <laughs> right, right. Um, so yeah. And if you feel better after that, then, then, then yeah, you're probably low in B12 and then, but then I wouldn't stay on the supplement for the rest of your life, but try to figure out what lifestyle factors were causing you to be low on B12 or whatever other supplement, you know, is it because you're not getting enough sunshine? Is it because you're always stressed because you're, unfulfilled in life and just unhappy and you know what just yeah, yeah create you focus on all those factors that they refer to in the body of work called natural hygiene right uh, and and focus on those things and you know and get better at juggling the balance between sunlight fresh air pure water emotional poise exercise a diet that we're designed for right. all these all these things that everybody thrives on when you know, on similar conditions so you don't take any B12? No. Okay, okay. And there, there, there was a time where I had a B12, a series of B12 shots, um, yeah. but it didn't make any difference to the problem, and the cause of the problem was that I'd poisoned myself, basically. <laughs> wow. And that's why I was experiencing symptoms, and I didn't have, I had tingling fingers, and, and that, you know, that's a known symptom of B12, yes. but I didn't, I didn't have any of the other B12 symptoms, and... Yeah, and the supplementing didn't help, and the, the problem eventually corrected itself just through just through time. But it takes a long time for nerve damage to repair. That's very interesting. Very interesting. I had something similar with uh, shaking fingers, and then I took the B12, and it fixed it. So, okay. so it probably was low B12 for you for sure. Yeah, um, you might have said this before, but did, was the uh, impetus to switch from cooked vegan to the all raw diet was that reading eighty ten ten or it sounds like you're familiar with natural hygiene as well were you reading other books about it too um, the The information I came across that made me switch to eighty ten ten was I heard the perfect health program by Douglas Graham, which is a twelve hour audio program where each hour is on a different topic like um, why you don't need, you know, all the colonics and all those things. Right. Why why stimulants and supplements can't work, and you know how much fruit is, you know, can you have too much fruit, and how to deal with social situations like taking family, you know, family to a restaurant, or how to yes, know, just all how to, but basically. I felt like after listening to that program, I had all the answers of how to do the lifestyle, and wondered why I hadn't thought of all these obvious things myself. <laughs> okay. And, just, and then literally, I just, I just switched overnight. I just I l listened to the program, probably listened to it five times in a row, and then just like, wow. But, and there were still, there were still lessons to learn, but, yep. but that, was, that, was, that was just a huge uh, influence uh, at the time. Well, I'm and glad. the 80-10-10 yeah, diet wasn't released at that point, the book. So. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. I'm glad you brought up this social thing, because I want to ask you about that. So... When you were 25, you switched to vegetarian, and uh, and I guess maybe you could just kind of go through the whole thing. How has it been socially in terms of immediate family and then also just uh, in the public when you're going into restaurants and shopping and that sort of thing? How have you managed with this, what what some would perceive to be a different kind of diet? You know? Yeah, well, one of the first benefits I got from it was that my family wasn't going to make food for me anymore. <laughs> so I had to learn how to, at first I was cooking food when I was vegetarian and, and, and cooked vegan. So, so I learned how to cook and that was really uh, liberating and it felt, felt fantastic. Uh -huh. um, and ever since then, I've just, I've, it's been effortless and it's been a pleasure to, to prepare my own food and, and, to, and I've loved learning about the seasons uh, as well through, through the raw vegan, learning when all the fruits and vegetables are in season. Yeah. The social situations, uh, I think, I think a, a lot of skills uh, are required to come into play that that are usually undeveloped in people. Ah, interesting. So, um, firstly, you know, you want to you come across all this great information, and, and you 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 want everyone else to to benefit from it. 
right, right. Often, often before you're benefiting from it yourself. You, you, everyone <laughs> else has to read this book, but you know, maybe you haven't read it yet. <laughs> right. And so we want to give everyone else the gift of health, but it's you really need to be the example and, and, and kind of be the shining light first. There, there was basically I, I at some point I realized that we have no right to have expectations of others or of ourselves. And letting go of expectations is not an easy thing to do, but I put a lot of thought into it and, and eventually I, I, I think I pretty much figured it out and, and life got a lot better after that. That's a beautiful teaching, yeah. Because people don't, people can't enjoy a meal with you, whether it's at a restaurant or at home, they can't enjoy their your company unless they're able to relax and enjoy what they're doing. And if they feel judged, they feel you're judging them and you may not be, but they may feel that you are, right? Uh, because they're not doing something nurturing for themselves if every, if what you're doing is right. So you know when they're eating some fatty, animal-based, you know, fried-up thing that 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 they know isn't healthy because they've heard it a million times, right? But, but that's their choice, and they and they want to enjoy that. And so if you can, when you're eating out, if you can just express firstly that you're really happy about eating a bowl of lettuce and tomato, <laughs> like literally, like I'm here for your company and you know, sincerely and, 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 you know, I'm really, I'm, I ate some fruit before I came and, and this is what I want to have right now. And, you know, let's, let's come here for, to enjoy each other's company and have a, have a good conversation. If you can just put people's mind to rest and then they can you know, even make a joke about their food or whatever, like just something, just make light of, of the situation and just so they can let their guard down, not feel judged. And, um, and, and so they can enjoy what they're doing. Yeah, that's really interesting because I get the impression you're enthusiastic about the diet and it's, it's had so many benefits for you. And, and it sounds like your work is related to that to some degree now, right? Um, yeah, completely. It's, um, it's my entire life now is all based around this lifestyle. So you, or, so could, you could say that on the one hand, you're, you're doing the work to kind of bring this message to people and at the same time you're willing to uh, modify your enthusiasm so that people feel comfortable in an eating situation yeah yeah absolutely and and you know sometimes you know I recognize the the glazed over look when when you're telling somebody something and they're, <laughs> and they're really not interested yeah I, I often stop um, mid mid sentence I'll just stop the conversation and they don't even realize at that point because you just see that look in their eyes and and they just don't really don't need it at that point. That's right. That's that's. So um, yeah, you, you t there can be timing. There's there's you basically if you want to give information to people, you almost have to let them think it's their idea. So if you can tell them in a way that they they walk away thinking it was their idea, <laughs> that's that's a powerful way to uh, to in, to make people change because change has to come from within. It has to be a choice. Everybody needs nurturing. Nobody needs to be told what they're doing is wrong. Yeah, that's beautiful. so so it's um. There's definitely an art to it, and just so I, I see my role as just helping people to be able to create a supportive environment for themselves of, that's supportive of their success. Yeah, that's. And I, I just try to refine that and keep improving on that as as you know without limits. And I'll, when I get better at it, I'll just keep getting even better and better again. <laughs> it's, that's beautiful. Beautiful. All right, there's so many things I want to talk to you about. Uh, one thing I wonder if you might share with the audience a little bit is your progression in terms of uh, athleticism. So I know that you've reached up to, you're, you're doing ultra marathoning now. Uh, was that, like you said, when you became vegetarian and then vegan, you kind of gradually started doing more and more and more. Is that kind of how the athletics worked out? Yeah, the, the athletic progression really like matches my diet chain, dietary changes <laughs> exactly. Uh, I. When I was 25, when I went vegetarian, that's that's when I started running 5K two or three times a week. Uh, you know, in 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 high school, I was you know I'd, I'd run two or three miles and I'd be stopped walking, running with a, a cramp or a stitch you know, in my side, and yep. I'd be red faced and my shoulders would be hunched over and I wouldn't be able to breathe properly, and I'd probably have asthma back at that time. <laughs> You know, it was pretty ugly. I wasn't. I definitely wasn't a runner. And then, so when I was 25, I, I started running 5K two or three times a week. I'd run more th more than three times a week at that point. Uh, I would I would start to get you know niggles in my sore like sore knees or ankles or uh -huh. 
delicious. So I'm like, so I accepted, okay, my body can't handle um, running more than three days a week. But it was, I mean, I totally believe it was just the the diet at the time wasn't supportive of of, of a fast recovery. Mm-hmm. So, um, so, and then when I was, yeah, when I was on a on a cooked vegan diet, I found I, w- I was able to run even further distances. Uh, I, I mean, I got really excited when I read a, about a race that was around 20 miles through mountains and and that excitement really um, was what drove me to do that race but I was also able to do the race because yeah. of the way it's living so it's it's, it's kind of interesting but yeah when I and like I said I, I, I hobble around like an old man for a week and, and right. now I, I've, I've run I've run at least 45 ultras now and most of them wow. 100 kilometers, some of them 100 miles. And, you know, if I was doing each of those, taking a week of, of hobbling around like that back then, I, I, I could see that I would end up with knee problems or, or, you know, issues like that. But now I feel like, I mean, I'm, I'm improving every, every race. You know, I'm 40 years old now and I'm still improving every race that I do. The most recent race I did was the best race that I've done. I'm about to do a race in a week that that I'm expecting to take four and a half hours off my time from last year. Wow. So, you know, I'm, I'm really excited. I feel much better this year and I, I just, everything feels great. And it's, it's kind of like the, the more health you build, the more health you can build is, is how I'm feeling. That's amazing. And these ultra marathons, they can be up to like 100 miles. Is that? Is that... Yeah, there's, there's, one I'm, there's one I'm whitelisted for in, in December in Australia, which is 160 miles, which starts at the ocean, so sea level. And climbs six thousand feet, or about two thousand meters, up to the highest point in Australia. So, wow! And how long does it take to run that distance? They have a cutoff. They have a cutoff time of forty-six hours for that race. So, you, so hopefully less than that. <laughs> Unbelievable! And do you eat throughout these races? Are you eating? Yeah, uh, the race I'm about to do in a week. Uh, last year I did that race, and uh, it's one hundred and five point nine miles, or one hundred and seventy-five point three kilometers through mountains, uh, yeah. and I ate 40 pounds of mango, or 14, uh, yeah, 40, 40 pounds of mango or during, the, during a 34-hour race. Wow. And I also ate two heads of celery and, and 25 medjool dates. And you, did you, do you carry some of this with you, or is that, are there stops along the way, or? During that race, I come across a checkpoint where I have a support crew uh, about every four or five hours. Wow. And do you eat the mango in its natural state, or is it kind of blended for you so you can drink it quickly? Or? They make three cuts. So they'll, they'll give me mangoes in a bag, and they'll just they'll cut the cheeks off, and they'll make one more cut under the stem so, I can, so it's ready for me to just peel off the, the so uh, just, skin from the seed part, and then I'll just eat, the, eat that while I'm running wow. That's out of amazing. the bag. And then I just carry the bag to the next checkpoint so they can wash it and reuse. Wow. And uh, I guess you just eliminate along the way when necessary. Is that- yeah, it's, and it's so effortless and, um, and a pleasant experience like it's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs> and it doesn't have foul odor because um, yes. everything's digesting properly. Yeah, I want to have a. I want to do a bumper sticker. Vegans smell better. You know, uh, I right. think it's it's just yeah. it's such a truism. You know, I, th- I think I think generally it is true, but but there were definitely there were times as a cooked vegan where you know I, I could empty a train carriage with uh, <laughs> the, the fragrance of the gas because if you have protein uh, spending too long in your digestive tract and and it starts to putrefy, then it, that that's what the the foul gas smell is if you have carbohydrates fermenting because they spend too long in your digestive, digestive tract they still create gas but it's it's odorless uh, very interesting so it's, so it's always a protein um, thing so a lot of the you know legumes that I'd make and, and eat, eat in large quantity sometimes they didn't digest so well and then you know right. you can end up with some pretty foul gas <laughs> and lose some friends <laughs> <laughs> you you remind me of something I'd like to hear your thoughts on when you switched from cooked vegan to raw vegan, was there a period of, say, like a week or two where your body acclimated digestively to the new diet? No, I, I really, I really, a, apart from not understanding what I was doing, I was learning like how many bananas do I eat in a meal, like how, how do I sat, satisfy myself? Right. There, was no, there was no 
so at first I didn't I didn't know and I, and I had to figure it out. But literally, I just overnight just started eating fruits and vegetables. And uh, what I did was I went on a family holiday for a week at that right at that time. And I've heard the perfect perfect health program just days before, and and I was like, okay, so I'm going to this remote area. Whatever food I take is all I'm going to eat because I'm, you know, I'm not even not not interested in compromising vegan, and I'm not going to be able to access vegan, you know, vegan prepared foods to be able to eat there. So whatever I take is what I'm eating, and I'm just taking raw fruits and vegetables, and and I just and I ate them, and 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 I was so happy. And I was reading another book. Uh, at the time, called "Alive: Your Natural Diet" by David Klein, um, uh-huh. which is which has got a lot of the works of T.C. Fry. It's based on the works of T.C. Fry, right? And it's you know it's all natural hygiene and and uh, yeah, it, it was it just reinforced what I was doing. So I think that's that's important too. Just just surround yourself with things that are supportive of your success. So use resources, books, people. You know, move move to a different environment if you need to. But yeah, that's you need a great to be in a supportive point. environment to succeed. Great point. You can't keep, you know, you can't stay in an abusive relationship and expect to be happy. It's, it's. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Although many try. <laughs> many try, yeah. yeah. It's almost like we, like, the behaviors people go through, they, they tend to almost be trying to revisit trauma to, to try to teach themselves a lesson or something. It's yeah. Like, it's a really interesting that we do that. Yeah, I think, yeah, you keep going through the loop until it's resolved. Yeah, that's interesting. Right, right. But sometimes you just need to snap out of it and just just say, no, I need a supportive environment. Yeah. This isn't it. And, and, and then it's easy. life is easy, so easy. You know, one of the things I read about you, and this may be dated, I don't know, but that your immediate family now doesn't really eat like you. Is that still true? Well, that's still true, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's challenging. You know, there's every once in a while folks are in it together. There's a couple and they're doing everything together. But it, how, how do you do that at home? You just like I guess you make your meals and they make their meals. Is that it? Or yeah, it, it really like I, I did try for many years to you know to try to eat at the same times and 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 even get them to like I'm making this. Are you interested in having some? And right. like, oh, no, not really. <laughs> you know, maybe they'd try it once, and then that, that's you know, yeah. and then and trying to make foods at the same time, you know, they they throw something in the microwave, and it's ready thirty seconds later, and and then they take five minutes to eat it, and they're gone, and and you know, I like to sit down and enjoy my meal, and and take the time to just enjoy the food, but yeah, so it definitely uh, it's definitely difficult to uh, to maintain a relationship, I think, through like when there's when there's such a big difference, like like food. <laughs> right, right. Between you, um, Somebody, it, I, I've seen it. I've seen people, you know, succeed in doing it, but um, but usually people just end up compromising what they really want to be doing in order to preserve what they what they value more, which is the relationship. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. I somebody told said told me a quote on on one of these interviews the other day that that it's harder for people to change their diet than their religion. And I think, yeah. that's, I think that's true. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I see people at, at an event like the Woodstock Fruit Festival where there were 600, over 600 low-fat raw vegans there right. all eating fruits and vegetables. And everybody there just I just click with. It's, 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 you feel, I feel like I've known them my whole life. Oh, that's great. And it's just, and, cause I, I, and I think it's just because... People don't change to a diet like that so lightly. They yes. they've been through a lot of personal growth and emotional growth. So as a person, they feel more whole than perhaps like a lot of other people that I, I sort of see in society. I see the same thing in ultra marathon running circles that because you have to, to run an ultra marathon, you have to run yourself into pretty vulnerable places and be willing to to keep going through that and to face all your fears. And so there's a lot of personal growth and personal development. So you know, I see. Some similar qualities there, but, yeah, but if you if you ever get to the Woodstock Fruit Festival, it's 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 off off the charts. It's amazing. Yeah, I've I've been watching about it, and I may try to go next year. It looks Talk about a celebration good. of life. It's it's yeah. just unbelievable. There's so much activity going on. People just fit. Everybody is fit. Like it's it's just astonishing. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's great. That's great. Um, one thing you you just mentioned. Doing the ultra marathoning, it, it can help you face 
issues and resolve them. Have you had experiences where you're like, say, halfway through 100 miles and then do, do some emotions start to come up, that sort of thing? Yeah, I've definitely, it, it's, a, it's a lot of quiet time alone with yourself. You're running out through, you know, remote forests. Yeah. There's nobody around and, you know, I usually don't carry, I don't have a mobile phone, so, you know, I only carry one and if it's mandatory race gear, I just borrow one and I study else. So I'm not on the phone to people while I'm running. Don't run with music in my, in my ear anymore. I used to many years ago, but I, I really just prefer the experience 100%. If I'm feeling emotions, I want to feel them. I uh, embrace them. All emotions are good. Um, yeah. even when, you, when I cry, it, I'm happy about it. Yeah, yeah. So, That's beautiful. And, and I, I find that, yeah, just being spending a lot of time out running on the trail, it, you know, I, there's no conscious thought. Had things, the things that matter to you just come up in your thoughts and, and you have a lot of time to think about them. And yeah, I've had a lot of fantastic insights and, and really joyful times on the trail just out there in the middle middle of nowhere alone. <laughs> it, it sounds like it turns into a kind of meditation. Uh, yeah, absolutely. For me, it's definitely a form of meditation. Yeah. All right. And sometimes uh, trauma. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, two things I want to ask you about. One is, what's your take on barefoot running? Love it, love it, love it. Can't get enough of it. I uh, just, just um, I was in Austin uh, about five days ago for a week, uh, just training for my race coming up. I was, I was doing, did, I, did a, just over 100 kilometers running around Austin and there was a one day I ran around Ladybird Lake which is uh it's it's a cement paths crushed rock and um and roads and and it's, it was a six mile course and I ran it completely barefoot and uh and I it, it was it's it's the toughest terrain I've ever run barefoot on and it's also the longest distance I've ever run completely barefoot so that was that was pretty awesome and that was six miles yeah, that was just six miles. Yeah. Okay. And you and you felt fine afterwards. Your feet, your feet felt fine. Yeah, I I actually um, started just just right at the end. I started getting a blood blister under my under one of my toes, uh -huh. but that didn't. There was there's some so there was some blood under the skin under the skin, but it yep. didn't didn't form into a, a like a, a, a fluid or blister. So the next day it just was dried up and I I, I was fine. I, I ran on. There's no problem at all. I don't even don't even know what's there apart from that it's purple. All right. Uh, but but I run all my races in in Vibram Five Fingers. Okay. The Spiridon model, which is the the one that they made for for trail running specifically, it has a rock deflection plate that kind of disperses some of the impact on the bottom of the shoe, and and the and the the sole is just a little bit thicker than than other Vibrams, so they protect you from bruising when you run on sharp rocks and various crazy terrain that I run through. So I find that the Spiridons running in those. Uh, you know, I can run. I can run 100 miles in those, and not have, and, and I won't have tight calves afterwards. Wow! Um, and I take it all those those uh, vibrams. I guess they're all cru cruelty free, right? Those are all like man-made synthetic products. Or? Uh, they are, except for the ones that aren't. Okay. okay. <laughs> there are. There are. There is a model that that is made out of kangaroo skin, and uh -huh. yeah, obviously, I don't use those. Okay. Gotcha. But but most of their range, almost all of their range, is is Guilty free. All right. There's another topic I want to hear your thoughts on because I think being from Australia, you probably know a lot about this, it, it, and it's the sun. And am I right in thinking that the ozone is such that Australia is getting more intense sunlight than other countries? How, That's what I say. Do, how, has, does that affect you in any way? I assume you feel like you're getting enough vitamin D from the sun. And uh, yeah. what's your take on skin cancer and that sort of thing? Yeah, I think I think skin cancer is a, is a result not of getting too much sun, as it is a result of having not 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 meeting your body's needs to have healthy physiology. So basically, the oils in your skin are all messed up, and and they're not in the way they're supposed to be, so they can't protect you from being damaged by the sun. Right, and would you say a large contributor to that is food that's not suited for digestion? Uh. Yeah, well, not so much just about digestion, but but just the nutrient, the nutrition in the food is not is not there. Like for example, basically the oils in your skin are formed by antioxidants in in the foods that you eat. So fresh fruits and vegetables have 
tons of antioxidants. Um, berries are supposed to be one of the best things for, for the sun, for protecting you, for creating oil, healthy oils in your skin to protect you from the sun. Uh, when I was on a cooked vegan diet, you know, I was doing that volunteer lifeguarding in Australia and when I would have a, a four hour patrol, just standing watching the beach, I'd, I'd get burned on the back of my legs, and I and I didn't want to wear sunscreen because I, you know, I didn't wasn't a, wasn't a believer in, yes. in all, all the chemicals of that. So, so I, I just wouldn't wear any, and I would wear long sleeves and try to protect myself from the sun that way, and a hat. But yep. But uh, but I would still burn on the back of my legs, and and when when I changed to eighty ten ten, just eating fresh fruits and vegetables, I pretty much never burn. I can I can burn. Uh, in the in in tropical locations like in Costa Rica on the beach in in the midday sun, I can burn in about an hour there because it's so intense. But most places that I am around the world, I you know like I run my ultras usually with no shirt on all day, you know, yep. <laughs> and into the second day, and and I don't burn. And other people are putting sun.